Verse 36, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What do it hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Uzotas, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Lord, bless the reading, the hearing, and the obedience of his holy word. Now let's dive right into our lesson on this morning. Is everyone still with me on this morning? I welcome all comments and questions this morning. Uh, this fellowship hall is a schoolhouse, amen? It's a schoolhouse right now. Did everyone get a handout from the back table uh, with the scriptures or with the information? If not, there are some back there. Last week's lesson uh, was about jumping for joy. Jumping for joy. This week's lesson is, is about someone believing in Jesus for the first time. And then being water, then, and then being baptized in water. How many of you uh, felt a unique experience when you first when you first believed, just by a show of hands. Something happened. Something supernatural happened in your life. A change came over you. You didn't go, and, and after that, you didn't go the places that you used to go to. You didn't talk like you used to talk. You didn't act like you used to act because there was a change that came over you, that came over your life. Am, is anybody with me on this morning? Yeah. Wasn't that a unique experience? Yes. Amen. I, I don't know about you this morning, but it was fulfilling. Amen. I was like, wow, what a breath of fresh air. Amen. <laughs> oh, what a change. And you know, I needed a change. I don't know about any of you, but I needed a change to come over my life. Amen. Because I know I was a wretch undone. How many of you have that testimony yeah. on this morning? Yeah. Amen. That you were rich and done. But thanks be to God. Thank God for Jesus on this morning. Yeah. Class, in our lesson today, I believe that the prophecies of the Old Testament text were truly orchestrated to be fulfilled in the New Testament scriptures. So those prophecies in the Old Testament, they actually come to pass in the New Testament. Our lesson story today concerns a religious pilgrim who journeyed to Jerusalem to visit the temple some 2,000 years ago. His pilgrimage to Jerusalem may well have been a once-in-a-lifetime voyage that took many weeks to complete. We know little today of the lasting influence of the Holy City, but we will learn of an encounter with an evangelist named Philip that changed his life forever. I don't know about you this morning, but Jesus has changed my life forever. Forever. And once we accept Jesus' uh, class, we have to realize that we got to serve him. We must serve him for the rest of our lives here on earth. It doesn't stop with just salvation. After you receive Christ, here comes the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's the power of God to witness. That's the power of God to do the work of the Lord, for the Lord. Because how many of you know this morning, you can't do it in your own strength. You must have the power of the Holy Ghost to witness. You must have the power of the Holy Ghost to do ministry for the Lord. You know, when you try to do it in your own strength, that's where you get in trouble. And that's what kind of where some, you know, the church internationally is right now because a lot of folk out there trying to do it in their own strength. In Zechariah, Zechariah said it's not by might, it's, meaning it's not by one's might, 
is not by one's power, but is by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So whatever we do, we want to make sure that his spirit yeah. is in it. Not our flesh, not our own uh, desires, our own will, but his desires and his will for our lives. I just wanted to throw that in there this morning. Amen. Amen. That wasn't part of my notes. I just felt the unction of the Holy Ghost to, to bring that forward. Amen. That's all right. Amen. Part one is titled Evangelist Running. This is Evangelist Philip running. Verse number 29 of Acts chapter 8 reads, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Notice here, he didn't say go join yourself to a person. He specifically said go join yourself to this chariot. In other words, I have work for you to do in this chariot, chariot or regarding this chariot. Here in verse number 29, we see that the Spirit of Almighty God said to Philip, to go thy near to the chariot and join thyself to this chariot that an Ethiopian eunuch was sitting in. The text does not say, once again, to go join yourself to a person. But join yourself to this chariot. Class, for your knowledge sake on this morning, this is not the Apostle Philip, but one of the seven chosen men found in Acts chapter 6, verse number 5. Furthermore, in verses 27 and 28, which are not part of our lesson text on this morning, um, they reveal several facts regarding whom Philip encountered in today's lesson text. First of all, the person who Philip encountered was from Ethiopia. How many of you ever been to Ethiopia? How many of you want to go to Ethiopia? I know I want to go. I want to go visit Africa. Amen. Ethiopia, which is a country in the continent of Africa that is south of the country of Egypt. This country is also known as Cush. C-U-S-H. Second, this Ethiopian person was also a eunuch. Though some during this time frame chose to be a eunuch, the word eunuch mostly commonly refers to a castrated male. Help us, Holy Ghost. Usually a slave who was used to watch over treasury. Regardless of the eunuch in this lesson text this morning, um, had obviously came, he had obviously became to believe in the holy God of Israel because he was on his way back home after worshiping in Jerusalem. Verse number 30 reads, And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Here in verse number 30, Philip runs toward the eunuch. And as he is running, he could hear the man reading the passage from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 7 and 8, that speaks of the suffering servant of the Lord who would be led like a sheep to the slaughter. I wonder who Isaiah is referring to on this morning. And as a result, Philip began to ask the eunuch a question, and that question was, does thou understand what thou readest? Class, the Old Testament book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7, teaches us that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get an understanding. Class, we can read and study the word all day long. But if there's no understanding then we need to ask God to help us to understand and show us the way. The text says, in all thy giving, get an understanding. We can sit in here and, and, and just read and read and read, and but if nobody's understanding anything, we're just going through the motion. Because the word teaches us that in all thy giving, all that you get from Wednesday night Bible study, all that you get from Sunday school, all that you get from church services when the word of God is going forth. In all thy getting, the word of God teaches us to get an understanding. 
to make sure that we understand. And if we don't understand, uh, the Word of God teaches us that if any man lack wisdom and understanding, get it from God. So we must seek God for it if we don't understand something. Amen? Hallelujah. And the verse number 31, it says, And he said, How can I, except some man, should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Here in verse number 31, the Ethiopian confessed his unfamiliarity of the word of God to Philip and invited him into the chariot to guide him and explain the passage from the Old Testament text of, of Isaiah chapter 53, verses number 7 and 8, which speaks once again of the suffering servant of the Lord who would be led like a sheep to the slaughter. Once again, I wonder who he's referring to on this morning. The Ethiopian eunuch had traveled to Jerusalem to worship and had some knowledge of scripture, but he was no master of the scripture. This eunuch is not by himself on this morning. He's not by himself because none of us class are masters of God's word. We all are a work in progress. I will never arrive. You will never arrive. We're all a work in progress. Only God knows all things. Only God is the master. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that on this morning? Amen. Amen. We all are a work in progress. Furthermore, the eunuch's reply to Philip for help is a clear desire for help with the text that he had been reading. However, the Ethiopian's thirst and hunger for the sincere milk of the word of God urged him to invite Philip to assist him and guide him. Class, what are some of the things that you do when you do not understand the word of God? Anyone? What are some of the things that you do? You ask God for wisdom. You ask God for wisdom. Sister Mason said you ask God for wisdom. Anyone else? How, do, how about prayer when you don't understand? How about fasting when you don't understand? How many of you have a study Bible? I know we have regular Bibles, but how many of you have a Bible where it's a study Bible also, where you can study it? So if you don't have a study Bible, you need to get you a good study Bible. You know, like an old Schofield study Bible or something along those lines. There's concordances. There's commentaries. Amen? So we have to dig in. Amen? When it comes to the Word of God, we have to begin to dig in to this Word. We have to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby, as the scripture said. Now, we, we not ex, you know, it's not expected of us to stay on milk all of our lives. Eventually, we're going to have to eat some of that strong meat. But we start off with that sincere milk of the word, understanding the Bible, reading the word, study the word, memorizing the word. How many of you memorize the word? Amen. That's a great practice also because the scripture teaches us that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against me, uh, sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That means if you have something already memorized in you, okay, you got something to pull from. Because you're not going to always, you know, you, you're going to be in a grocery store. You're not going to have this Bible here walking around in a grocery store. But if you have studied the word, if you have memorized the word, you got something to fight with. Because you can say, uh, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Let me start that scripture over again, because Jesus said it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If that one scripture alone, if the devil or the Satan tries to tempt you, you can always say, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. 
you got something to fight with. Jesus used that same scripture against the devil. And you know what? It worked. <laughs> it worked. The devil went away for a short time. But he came back to tempt him again. And guess what Jesus put on him? He put that word on him again. And that should teach us also that, hey, we're going to have to continue to fight this thing out every day and every night. It's not going to be easy. But the scripture teaches us to put on the whole armor of God, or the full armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, that's how we fight. We fight in the spiritual realm. We fight through the word of God. We fight through prayer. We fight through fasting. We, put, we fight by putting on the shield of faith. God has given us an arsenal, amen, of tools to use against the enemy, against the adversary. And we have to use those tools. We can't set them aside. You know, how many of you know that the believer doesn't get a day off? You know, I don't, I'm finding that out every day. I don't get a day off because I tell you, every time I get ready to teach or have to teach, every time I have to get ready to preach, you better believe the enemy is coming at me strong. God is my witness. My wife is my witness. Every time I have to do something for the Lord, I tell you, here comes the enemy. He's throwing those fiery darts. You know, he's pick, trying to pick me apart or break me down. But you cannot let him break you down. You have to go forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's how we do it. In the name of Jesus. You know, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, moving right along. Some more things. Uh, well, I went over that with those things already. Uh, part two of our lesson on this morning is titled... Gospel preaching. Amen. Class, what is real gospel preaching? What is real gospel preaching? That might be a hard question. Sister Mason. Gospel preaching is proclaiming the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow. That's gospel preaching, preaching about Jesus. The death, the resurrection, death, the burial, the resurrection. That's it. That is the gospel. Amen. Amen. Sister Mason said that's the, the death, the burial, the resurrection. What is it? The rapture, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's real gospel preaching. God doesn't want us to get up there and talk about Time Magazine. He doesn't want us to get up there and talk about the latest sports events. He doesn't want us to get up and proclaim the word and just talk about us and what we, you know, what we're dealing with or what we're going through. But real gospel preaching is the, the, the birth, the life, the death, and the, the rapture, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you believe that on this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 32 of Acts. Here in verse number 32 is a prophecy of the Old Testament book of Isaiah. In God's providence, the Ethiopian's encounter with Philip coincided with the reading of a passage of text from the book of Isaiah that presents one of the clearest prophetic visions of the coming Messiah in none, of, in none other than Jesus, who is the Christ. The verses from the book of Isaiah 53 are quoted to nearly 40 times in the New Testament, which makes it a key text for understanding our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the soon coming King. This particular key text presents Jesus as one who would suffer in accordance with God's will, rather than serve as a military leader who would fight for political independence of the nation of Israel. Class, the descriptions of the sheep and the lamb portray the suffering servant as one who would fight or protest while on the way to their death. Verse number 33, we find that although the Roman governor, Pilate, declared that there was no valid charge against Jesus, 
Pilate still consented to his execution. Class Jesus as the suffering servant of Israel, uh, Isaiah's prophecy apparently had no hope of being the father of a future generation. Jesus endured the humili humiliation of this prophecy. The word humiliation in the text describes the trial and crucifixion that Jesus endured for you and I. He endured the cross. He endured the shame. And he did it for you and I. He did it for the entire world. Verse number 34 reads, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Here in verse number 34, we find that the eunuch, in an effort to answer his own question, he answered Philip and said to him, Pray thee, of whom speaks the prophet Isaiah this, of himself or some other man? Class, this is possible because given that the book of Isaiah sometimes in the text, it spoke of his own experiences, but the Ethiopian eunuch probably realized that the passage under much thought today did not quite fit the prophet Isaiah's circumstance. Therefore, the eunuch probably suspected some other man to be in view of Isaiah's text. However, the eunuch's careful reading and interpretation of the scripture brought him to a place where he was open to hearing about the person of Jesus the Christ. Verse number 35, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Class, here in verse number 35, the evangelist uh, Philip began to open up his mouth and declare that Jesus is the soon coming king. He preached Jesus to the Ethiopian eunuch. And this is a great example to those of us who confess that we have been called or declared, or, or we have declared the word of God. We should make it a habit to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Philip didn't preach Time Magazine. He didn't preach the latest sports news. He didn't even mention anything about himself. However, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to the eunuch. Therefore, when we as believers in Christ get the opportunity to share in the word of God, um, we should always preach Jesus and him crucified. He is our Lord and he is our master and our savior. And the songwriter says that he saves to the, old, to the utmost. He saves to the utmost. Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, is able to reach those places that are impossible for mankind to reach. I don't know what anybody in here is going through, but I know that Jesus knows exactly what you're going through, and he's able to meet you at the point and level of your need. You may be going through a terrible situation, but you look good on the outside, but on the inside, you're torn up. Jesus is able to heal that. Jesus is able to restore that. Jesus is able to set the captives free. How many need to be set free on this morning? Amen. I don't know about you, but we, we all need to be set free. Because we all deal with situations. We all deal with circumstances. But Jesus is always there. He's always there to meet us at the point and the level of our need. Whatever our need is, Jesus is able to meet that need. We must remember this morning that pastor, he can't save you. Assistant pastor, he can't save you. None of the elders, none of the evangelists can save you. Amen. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves to the utmost. Part three, which is our final part of our lesson on this morning, is titled Water Baptism. Water Baptizing. Class, in your own words, what does water baptism signify? Anyone? What does water, Sister Lisa? You're identifying with Christ. Amen. Sister Lisa said you're identifying with Christ. Anyone else? 
What does water baptism signify? Nobody else? Amen. Say again. Cleansings of sin. Cleansings of sin. All right. Mother Fusey said cleansing of sin. Anyone else? Amen. All right. Public acknowledgement, an outward show, outward, outward uh, signifying of, of who you believe in, or who you stand for, whose side are you on. It shows whose side you are if you're on the side of Christ because you're openly and you're not ashamed of being baptized before others. Because there's other people standing there watching you being baptized as well. And you're not ashamed of it. Amen. Amen. Verse num in verse number 36, the eunuch invited Philip up into the chariot while he was still moving. Then Philip preached unto the eunuch from Isaiah 53 verse number 3. While they were still moving in the chariot, and the eunuch spotted water to be baptized, and says to Philip, What doeth hinder me to be baptized? Amen. The eunuch has now received the message of Christ, and is ready to make an official outward sign of allegiance from the former state of belief. For instance, whenever someone heard the word of Christ, they were baptized in water as an open sign of allegiance unto the belief of Jesus Christ. Verse number 37, please understand that Philip had spoken a lot about the eunuch. Um, he had spoken a lot to the eunuch about Jesus. Class, please note, after the preaching of the gospel, the hearer must believe, the hearer must accept, and invite Christ into their life. The lesson text goes on to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Ethiopian eunuch made a confession of his belief, that he believed Jesus is the Son of God. The Ethiopian eunuch made a public confession of many things this one, uh, in this one phrase, because number one, he confessed Jesus. Number two, he confessed the son of Joseph and Mary, Number three, he confessed Christ, the Messiah. And number four, he confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, making Jesus a divine deity or being. Sister Mason. Yes, Brother, uh, uh, you, you're hitting all the points. Excellent. And I, I'm, I'm going to put these chairs. I want to ask a question for okay with you. Sure. No, it does not save you. Water Sister Mason wanted to know if water baptism saved you. No. The scripture says in Romans 10 and 9, it says, Thou, uh, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Key word is confession. There has to be a confession of Christ. Amen. Water baptism will, alone will not save you. In fact, if you're not saved, you shouldn't even be getting baptized. You shouldn't even be touching the water if you're not saved. Elder Robs, do you believe that? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you should not even be touching the water if you're not saved. Does that answer the question at hand? Everybody on board with that? Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a comment about that? Amen. That's what the scripture in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10 say. That's what salvation is all about. And you know, if you notice here in Romans 10, 9 and 10, I'm running out of time, but it doesn't say anything about, about confessing sin. It doesn't say anything about confessing sin. Yes. Well, another example would be for a marriage couple. Uh -huh. The ring that is in outward sign of the marriage. Mm -hmm. That's a good 
good example. That's just an out, but that don't make you married. You know. You, but that doesn't make you married. By you wearing that ring. Amen. What makes you married is a covenant. There's a three strand cord. God, uh, the husband, and the spouse, the male and the female. Let me put that out there. That's a marriage. God, one male, one female coming together in a covenant. That's a marriage. That's a God ordained marriage. Not the same sex marriage, but opposite sex and God. Coming, to, coming before God and making a covenant, an agreement with God. Make it a vow. Amen. 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 Uh, verse number 38. I got a few more seconds. About four minutes. So Elder, Elder Madison said I got about four minutes. Amen. <laughs> number 38. Uh, in verse um, 30, 38 and 39, the eunuch commands the chariot to stand still. They both go into the water. To baptize the eunuch. Once they come up out of the water, submerged, the Spirit of God caught Philip up. There is more for Philip to do for the Lord through the Spirit of God. The eunuch saw Philip no more, and he went on rejoicing in the Lord. Then Philip was seen on the other side of town. Verse number 40, we see that the evangelist Philip's assignment with the eunuch was finished, but he had more work to do. For instance, once he baptized the eunuch according to the Holy Spirit, he had another place to be. The eunuch, right after the baptism, didn't see Philip anymore. Verse number 39 said that Philip was called away. He was called away by the Spirit. Some Bible scholars argue if he disappeared or not. However, Scripture said he was caught away. The next time anyone sees Philip, he is in a place called Uzotas. The place called Uzotas is a popular place in the Old Testament called Ashdod. Amen. Class, this concludes our lesson for this morning. At this time, are there any questions or comment regarding the lesson on this morning? A lot of people want to be... Yes. This lesson, I don't believe in coincidence. Amen. Say that again, Sister Haskell. I don't believe in coincidence. Amen. I believe that this lesson was a divine direction. Divine direction. A divine connection. A divine direction for a divine connection. Amen. Elder Robs. You know, it's, it's interesting uh, when you look at the uh, Lord caught away. You think about the rapture. You think about how the word is went. The mm -hmm. word came to this unit, and all of a sudden it just disappeared. Amen. 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 It will happen. How many of you believe that on this morning? By show of hands, that, that we'll be raptured out of here. Amen. All right. A lot of people want to be saved. Some know how and some don't know how. Uh, I'm here to let everyone uh, know anyhow that it is easy as A, B, C. A, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. B, believe that he died on the cross, were buried, and on the third day, God the Father physically raised him from the dead. C, confess that you are a sinner, and Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Christ and Savior who can forgive you of your sins. Next week's lesson topic is Saul of Torses. The lesson text will be coming from the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. So please connect with next week's Power for Living adult class. Our point of contact for comments and questions is Elder Otis Bryant. He's our Sunday School and Power for Living Sunday School Superintendent. And he can be reached at Otis Bryant at imanikojic.com. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the maker, the creator of the ends of the earth, the giver of every good and perfect gift, we thank you for this time that you allowed us to have on this morning. As we went into the study of your word, we pray you bless every person under the sound of my voice, that you meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. A child saved is a soul saved plus a life. If you know your Bible, the Sunday school needs you.
If you don't know your Bible, then you need the Sunday school. Everybody, everybody, everybody needs the Sunday school. As I say to one, I say to all, watch and pray, go in peace, and take the Lord on with you everywhere you go. Why, Brother Haskell? Because you're going to need him. You're going to need him. I have a little video if you want to watch the 